everyone welcome to this course by IntelliPet on Salesforce certification dev 501 dev 501 is a certification by Salesforce which talks about advanced development skills on force.com platform which basically covers all your coding skills related to force.com platform starting from your apex classes till apex triggers visual force pages your integrations is all what Dev 501 talks about. So now is the time to understand and spend some time on understanding what an Apex is. So some of you might be thinking Apex is a scripting language, it's a client based language, or it's a server kind of a language, or it's a language that is used by the Salesforce.com. So you are somewhere right, Apex is one of the languages in which Salesforce does its coding. Or the force.com platform which understands the language is Apex. And Apex is a strongly typed object-oriented based programming language. Apex is a language which gives the developers the permission, the power to perform the DML operations. Any complex business logic which they need to build on the system is something this Apex enables them to do. It's very much integrated, easy to use. The API exposed by the Salesforce are one of the easiest APIs and they talk about the granular level of things into the system. Data focused. This is the most, I would say the USP of Apex. The point is that Apex would always run in a bulkified fashion. So if I insert 20 account records, Apex code will run only once. It will not run 20 times on the system. Regress. That's again one of the most important property of any programming language, or I would say one of the important features that I would like to see in any of the programming language, that it has to be regress. A small break should break the whole system. That should be the rigorness of the system, right? Or I would say it should be like a chain, a one dot broken, the whole chain is broken over there. And Salesforce meets the expectation on that front. If there is some field I'm trying to delete and it is being referenced somewhere, system will not allow us to do that. System will frankly raise a question, please go ahead, make these changes and then move ahead with the systems and the last two points is it's very easy to test this particular programming language the testing framework that Salesforce provides is very easy to use you are not dependent upon any third-party testing tools Salesforce has its own test framework which is called as test classes using those test classes Salesforce provides a very rigorous testing environment and the last point is versioned. All your releases in the Salesforce are versioned. So your Apex programming language are also versioned. So as of now, we are working on the version 32. And the best part of this versioning is your lower version will never fail on the higher versions. Or in other words, if I like to put up is the next versions, the upgraded versions never break the lower versions that's what the Apex programming is all about. So now after understanding what an Apex is or seeing the capabilities of Salesforce platform, it becomes a very big question that when to use Apex. Do we use Apex every time? The answer to that is no, because Salesforce is a predefined platform with a CRM solution, with a CRM functionality. So we need to use Apex when there is a complex validation across the objects. When the business logic that need to be supported is very much complex across the objects, involve multiple objects and cannot be done with the help of workflows. Define any email services. Anything email coming into the Salesforce, I need to read that email and do the stuff accordingly we do with the email services. I create a record on record creation. I need to send out an email as well as process some other records 
that's where I need to use your Apex programming. Then comes your Visual Force. When do we need new screens to be developed in Salesforce? One primary requirement could be I need the branding of my organization. I need my own color theme on top of them. I have to go with the Visual Force pages over there. Or if I'm trying to make a custom wizard for that, if I'm trying to create a custom wizard or a custom solution or a multi-step solution, I need to go for a Visual Force pages for that. So the last leg of this particular session talks about how Apex works. The very important lines related to the Apex is Apex compiles, stores, and runs completely on the force.com platform. There's nothing stored on your local for the four Apex programming. This particular diagram tries to explain this line in a very detailed and a self dictionary manner. So here is your end user. This is your developer and this is your end user. Let's first talk from a developer's perspective. He writes some code, try to save that code or compile that particular code. The request goes to the application server of the force.com platform. So they never go to the local system. It always goes to the application server of the force.com platform. It's compiled over there. Once it gets compiled, the particular stuff is stored on the data storage of force.com. In case there are certain errors in the compilation, those errors are sent back to the developer. The same is being stored, the same process is being used when we are working around the globe. The end customer is making a request. It will go to the application server and directly go to the data storage. From the data storage, it will pick up the compiled code which needs to be run at this particular request and that particular compiled apex is being given to the application server. The application server interprets it, the interpret runs it at the and after running that particular code, it renders the result of that particular request. If it is in the form of Visual Force page, the Visual Force page is getting refreshed, or it is in some other ways, it would be applicable to the end customers. So this is how the complete cycle works for the Apex programming. So in this particular session, what we have talked about is what an apex is how and when to use the apex are the main three pillars main three discussions that we had in this particular session thank you everyone